dimension of grace and glory. So come expectant. And also, foundation class takes place after the second service. Please connect to Reverend Janet or and Pastor Jennifer. The following people should please see Pastor Emanuela after the second service today for the social media team meeting. We have Pastor Wumi, we have Brother Matthew, we have Sister Esther and Sister Shante. Please see Pastor Emanuela after the second service today. This quarter, we have exciting things going on and things happening with the Kofi Carrier team, which is already live on the DPMI website. There are opportunities that are consistently posted there. And if you need support, there's someone that will be able to assist you with whatever resume support you need. If today is your first time, please, we'll love to recognize you and celebrate you. Please text the word WELCOME to 773-538-3012. If this is your first time worshiping with us, can you please rise? And if you're worshiping with us for the first time online, please text the word WELCOME to 773-538-3012. We definitely want to connect with you, and we hope you enjoy the service. Before I leave, I'd like all of us to participate in the verse for this week. Are we ready? So let's turn to Psalms chapter 139, reading from verse 15 to 16 out of the Passion Translation. It says, and you can say after me, you even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me. From nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. And before I'd ever seen the light of day. The numbers of days you planned for me. Tell your neighbor, this month, as I stand bold... I'm standing in accordance with all that God has purposed for me to accomplish here on earth. Hallelujah. Let's please welcome Pastor Dr. Raymond for the testimonies. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise as we welcome him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we have the book of Psalms 96, verse 3, please? Psalms 96, verse 3. Psalms 96, verse 3. Don't stop. Keep on singing. Make his name famous. Tell everyone every day how wonderful God is. Give them the good news of our great Savior. If God has done something amazing in your life and you want to share a testimony, can you please come to the right-hand side to share your testimonies? Share your testimony to encourage others of what God has done in your life. Can you please come forward and share your testimonies, please? Don't keep that testimony. Being alive is a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Church on fire. Church on fire. God is so good. Amen. I stand here bold. To God be the glory. Giving him honor and all the glory in the absence of my papa, Dr. David Philemon, and my spiritual mommy, Mama Mimi. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this nation. State to state. Government to government. Amen. He has given me authority over each state. I give him honor and I give him glory. It is global and he's moving by his spirit and nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. God has put me in different places in the governmental arena. Had no idea I would be working with the government. Amen. From state to state. And everything get paid for. Come without money. Buy without money. I've got come without money. I do it without money. That's the kind of God we serve. I don't need no money. Church on fire, I don't need no money. 
God got all the money. And he makes sure everyone pour favor out on me. To God be the glory. I give him honor. I got back in town this week. Soon as I arrive in my car, I drive down to one way. I'm coming down to one way. A guy gets out, come out of nowhere with a Glock. Who know what a Glock is? Y'all know what a Glock is. That's the thing that, and how many know? I have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and power over what? Every enemy. He gets out with the Glock, started pointing at me and getting, trying to pull the trick up. I jump out the car, grab him and say, what authority? Do you think you have? And I say, when you look in there, he started shaking. You scare me. You scare me. You scare. That's power. Raw power. He was shaking like a leaf. He looks at me. He say, who are you? You're an angel. God had transfigured me into an angel. Every bullet, and you know this thing has over 50 rounds in it. He clipped the clip out, not one bullet in the chamber. He got so mad, he looked at me, and he started going in his pocket. He was shaking, going in his pocket. He threw the gun on top of the car, on another car, not mine. He put it on the car, and I'm like, what are you doing? He took another clip out, put the clip in the gun, wanted to try to, I say, no weapon formed against me. What army brought you to kill me? The devil is a liar. His pants on fire. I got too much work to do, amen? And I'm telling you, God is moving with so many things. I'm t I can't even tell you the half of it. I just gave you that story. I am a testimony. As Reverend Bright would say, I'm a walking testimony. Amen? To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you will fulfill the days on this earth. You will not die an untimely death. The Lord will preserve you and your family. Hallelujah. Um, my name is Pastor Amanda. I just want to thank God for preservation and peace. Um, my mom's husband uh, passed away um, a couple of days ago. And um, before he passed away, he was actually on the machine. And Papa told me to go to the hospital and to lead him to Christ. So um, I led him to Christ, and they said that he couldn't breathe on his own without the machine. So um, after we prayed, and um, me and one of his other family members, we prayed and led him to Christ. Well, I led him to Christ, but the family prayed with me. Uh, God kept him alive for two days, but they took the machine. They took him off the machine that they were saying that he, he couldn't breathe on his own, but he breathed for two days. And my mom got a chance to go in there and speak her words to him. But I want to thank God for peace as well, because my mom, though she's lost her husband, she's at a place of peace. Me and my husband went over there with her yesterday, and she was just listening to gospel songs, and her body and her mind was at a place of peace, and she was just thanking us and just thanking God for peace. So I just want to give her all glory for allowing my mom to be able to talk to him without the machine on, and then allow my mother to have peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Esther. I just want to thank God for... Um, Everything God has been doing with uh, me going back to school and everything. Uh, literally, the way it, the whole thing even started has been so gracious with the, um, the school I was in before. They messed up with the billing, so they ended up, um, they gave me a refund, and then I used it to get a used car. And then we came back and was like, oh, there's still like 3000 left. I was like, well, who's going to pay that? Because the refund is gone. <laughs> and... Um, so eventually I didn't go back to the school. I was just focusing on work and I got to a point where I just took more work more seriously than going to school. So um, in going back to school, I was like, oh, but I'm pulling at this school so they're not going to reduce my official transcript. But then I, for whatever reason, I was like, I'll just try it and see. I went on the website, I, did, I processed it and like five minutes later it was like, oh, your transcript has been released. And um, I'm saying that to say, like, now, this uh, this time, I had this assignment from one of my classes, which I've been getting 100% on every single assignment. So this time, 
I was rushing to get this last assignment in uh, last, I think Monday, and I went ahead and turn, ended up turning it in at, it was due at 11.59. I turned it in at exactly 12 a.m. So it's still, you know, the computer is just like, oh, it's late. And this class has over a thousand students. You're not allowed to have any late assignment because they, they want to be fair to every single person. And then uh, there's the citation page, and I saw that it says return in the, cita the citation page. So I was like, you know what? I already have it in the assignment, but I'll turn the citation page, um, the citation page in separately, you know, just to be safe in case she does go ahead and grade it. At least I'll get like a full grade or a much better grade. Um, but then she, uh, I woke up two days later. I see a text message on my professor. She was like. Desiree, could you send me your assignment? Because I only got the citation page. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> so uh, what I realized was that the assignment is also missing something. You had to have pictures, and I didn't have pictures for it. So because she saw that I turned in a citation page, so she was like, well, she must have done the assignment. So it must have been a glitch that the assignment did not turn in. So not only was I able to get my a full score, <laughs> I was able to go ahead and add the page, the pictures in, and I'm just so freaking excited because I'm like, how did that even happen? I saw it like submit and say late, but now if not only was it still late, but I was able to still get my full point. So I'm thankful to God for that. Thank God for favor. Whether you are right, you are wrong, you are always right. Can we just stand up on our feet and give the Lord praise and thank the Lord for all those testimonies? If you're trusting God for your own testimonies, ask the Lord, petition the Lord for your testimony, for your testimony to be released upon you. Father, we preserve every testifier in this house, and we ask that you release testimonies for those who are trusting you for testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. With Jesus' joy, can we welcome the Royal Dadam Choir? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we worship the Lord? Can we go ahead and exalt the name of Jesus uh, and magnify the Lord? And magnify the Lord with me. Come on, can we exalt his name together? Come on, if you know that you are a champion, that you are a winner on the Lord's side, can you lift up your voice and give God a praise and exalt the mighty name of Jesus? Hallelujah.
It is easier said than done. But with the spirit of the Lord following you everywhere, you will stand bold and face the devil face to face. Yes. And I'm sure you are an overcomer. Amen. So you want to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. By your power. By your power. And your authority. By your authority. This month. This month. I will stand bold. As we stand bold. I will stand bold. I will stand bold. Against everything. Against everything. That the devil brings my way. That the devil will bring my way. I know. I know. And I know, and I know, with you on my side, with you by my side, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. Open oh, your mouth, lift up your voice. You're an overcomer. Oh, mother, what the devil bring our way? This month, I will stand bold by the power of God, because He has seen me. He's greater than He has seen me. Make us a man who goes to the grave. Make us a man who goes to the grave. Make us a man who goes to the grave. Make us a man who goes to the grave. Make us a man who goes to the grave. Jesus, precious name, we pray. Amen. Oh, why don't you lift up your voice and give him thanks? It's a Father, God we thank you, Father, for every prayer that we make. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for making the way. We give you the adoration. We thank you, Father. I bless you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you sit down and never go down? Amen. On behalf of our Papa, God's servant, Dr. David. Philemon, I'm here this morning to tell you that you have a reason to be proud and you have a reason to stand bold against anything that the devil brings your way from this month forward. Last week, on Saturday, some of you must have seen me on Sunday when I came in. I wasn't looking my brightest. On Saturday morning, I was sleeping when uh, a phone call came in because electronic leash, you always carry it everywhere you go. I should have left it in the living room. But I picked it up and I wanted to answer it. I looked at it. It was my, one of my sons, uh, Pastor Noma, that called. And I opened my eyes and my eye, everything was spinning and spinning and spinning. I said, what's going on? I closed my eyes. I opened it again, spinning and spinning. I said, oh. So I had to close my eye all through that phone call. And all through that day, I was having the same feeling. When I'm walking, and it's like everything is turning, the whole house. And I said, the devil is a liar. So all through the day, I couldn't eat very well. I was thinking about it. I already promised my, my uh, grandchildren, I said, that Saturday we're going to be go do fathers and, and sons thing. We're going to go to the park, but I couldn't do anything. So I said, the devil is a liar. He's trying to show me something, and I'm going to stand against it. So on Sunday morning, I got up, 
I was still feeling it. I said, but you're not going to deprive me of being in the presence of the Lord. And I came. Boldly, I got in the car. I drove. And I got it. By the time I got to that door, everything disappeared. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And before I came, I already texted Reverend Jennifer. Say, I may not be able to do whatever is assigned me because of this is what is happening. She didn't even read it until after the service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the devil will bring some things your way that will make you to be afraid of the future. This month, you stand bold and confront your fears. Fear is a killer and it's of the devil. This morning, we're going to talk about how we stand bold against whatever the devil brings our way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, one of the greatest enemies to the progress and success of every believer is this insidious and destructive spirit called fear. Fear is a spirit. It's a spirit. So, if we don't slam the door boldly on fear, it can cripple you. Evil spirits are all recognized by their name. They are recognized by what they do. And this demon is no different. To walk in the victory that God, Jesus, purchased for us, we must stand bold and slam the door on fear. Praise the Lord. So on Monday, I continue with my story. As I was getting ready to leave, as usual, People call me from work and all those things. And then my daughter over there called me. And I said, Daddy, how was your weekend? I know she wanted something. I said, my weekend was fine. Then I had to tell her my story. She said, Daddy, when was the last time you saw a doctor? I said, Doctor, 1977, January 1st. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She said, Daddy, I'm going to set up an appointment for you to see the doctor. I said, why? He said, because of what you went through. He said, you must go. So I said, oh, God, why did I tell her? So she set up the appointment. She called, got my bill of bed, got everything. As I was driving, she told me, you are seeing the doctor. Very first thing in the morning, 8.30 in the morning, I said, I will still be sleeping. She said, Daddy, you're not sleeping, no. You're going to. So she said, then after that, 30 minutes later, she said, Daddy, it's not only that, though. I set up a massage appointment for you at 5 p.m. I said, my goodness. <laughs> massage, I've never been massaged before, but now, since you set it up, I will go for it. Then Papa called. Papa called. I said, ah, Reverend Bright, how are you? Because I already texted him. I told him about it. I said, I said it's not even I am, right, I am right now, but your daughter is setting me up to go and meet a doctor. Yeah. Then I said, he said, I should go for massage. Then Papa laughed. said, go and enjoy yourself. I said, oh, is that enjoyment? He said, yeah. Make sure you go and enjoy. That's so that bold in me. So, Tuesday morning, I went straight to the doctor. They took my blood pressure. Of course, I'm already huffing and puffing. My blood pressure was sky high. It was 196 over 90. And the doctor said, ah, your blood pressure is high. I said, that's the devil. I said, I reject it. That's not my blood pressure. He said, what do you mean? I said, it's not my blood pressure. I said, okay, don't worry. Relax. We'll take it over again. He said, you're going to take, uh, uh, do some blood work. And I said, this one now. They're going to tell you this is wrong, that is wrong, and you start having fear. So, all that. And then she decided to test me and then look at my ear. Then look at the right ear. He said, is some, is, are you feeling pain? Yes, I'm not feeling pain. He said, but this, the drum here is inflamed. There was an infection. That was the cause of this vertigo that I had all the time. And so they gave me antibiotic. My brothers and my sisters, the devil will bring something. If not for my daughter insisting, I wouldn't have gone. Maybe today, all through the week, I'll be still having the same issue. Everywhere I'm going, everybody would be thinking I'm drunk. And I'm going like that. Praise the Lord. So, it's fear. We have to slam the door on fear. 
in order to be able to face our future. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us open our Bible to one very passage that we always read, and I love it so much, is Psalm 23. In the King James Version, Psalm 23. We're going to read all that psalm, and then we're going to focus. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord Of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, we read this psalm every time. But we don't even know sometimes we just do it subconsciously. We don't know. We don't even look at the content very well. Surely you know God is with you. And when it's with you, no other power can be around where God is. If you know and you believe that God is with you, then who else can be against you? Nobody. That gives you the boldness. You have to stand bold. See, we love this passage. It has been and will continue to be an amazing source of comfort and assurance in many different circumstances and situations for us. I ask you that you read it at least once a day. Read this passage once a day. But this morning, we are going to zero in on verse 4, which says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. So literally, when David speaks of the valley of the shadow of death, he is speaking about the terrors that one often experiences when they are standing on the brink of death itself. When you are faced with death, that is what David was talking about. No doubt, In David's running from Saul, he often felt very near to death. And as a result, David had learned how to process through his fears and how to slam the door on his fear boldly. Somebody said, one time, somebody said, that all fear is, is false evidence appearing real, as though the object of fear was just an illusion or an imagination, or just a must or a mist or a fog that will fade away when the sun comes. But you and I know that is not true. We know that is not true. Because I wish that was true. But we see the object of our fear are many times more real than we even want want to think about it. This is why I bring this question to you today. And I believe it's relative and important. How are we supposed to slam the door You are not going to go through this. How do we face the future boldly and fearlessly? How? When the thing in our future that promotes and gender fear remains the same. Inflation, gas price going up, all those things are there. How 
how do you slam the door on fear when those things that you are afraid of about the future is real? And they remain the same. In other words, how do I rise above the reality and the possibility of the manifestation of my fear? That is the question. Let me say this. You can tell someone, don't fear. You can tell the person, don't be afraid. But does that eliminate fear? When fearful things in our environment remain the same? Of course, the answer is no. One of my son, when he was young, and when Nigeria, you know, you will have uh, electricity just five minutes in one week. The rest of the week, there's no light. And at night, we're all gathering together in the living room, and we tell him to go and get something from the room. He will be shadow boxing. He'll be boxing the darkness. He's trying to conquer his fear. <laughs> He'll be going, bah, bah, bah. He said, go now and get it. He said, wait. I have to fight whoever is there. Are you there? Go. So, that's fear. <laughs> He's shadow boxing. And we have all this fear that confront us sometimes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, to slam the door on our fear, it's not just ignoring the object of fear. To slam the door on our fear, you must give someone something greater than the thing that causes fear. And the greatest thing that is greater than your fear is the word of God. The word of God is the thing that is greatest greater than, the, than, than, than whatever you are afraid of. And that, if you stand on that word, you are bold. And you can stand bold and slam the door on fear. Praise the Lord. To slam the door on fear, you have to identify it for what it is and what it does. You must consider fear as your public enemy number one. Don't give it any chance. If you do, it will cripple you. Fear is a crippling spirit. It paralyzes and it, it neutralizes everything that you want to do. Once you have that fear and you just delve on that fear, you can't do anything. Fear is a magnet and it pulls you down towards disaster. Fear. You, you have to remember what Job said. He said, the things that I have greatly feared is come upon me. Fear, it drags one, it magnets you into disaster. Because while you are afraid, you are looking at fear, you don't even know about the car that is coming behind that is probably trying to hit somebody. Fear. Fear is a destructive, it's a very destructive in nature because it is a child of the devil himself. Fear is the devil counterpart of faith. Fear, in other words, fear is faith in the devil's power and ability to bring his will to pass in your life. That is what fear is. To slam the door on fear, you must hate the fear with all the being in you. You must see it as the devil himself trying to rob you of everything that is precious in your life. You must see fear as that. Fear is a sucker. It will suck every ounce of life right out of you. It will drain you. It will drain your soul of any hope that things could ever get better. It will wring you, wring you out like a dish rag if you give it room. That's what fear does. If you don't conquer your fear, my brothers and my sisters, it will squeeze every drop of joy out of your life. I want you to tell somebody that today I am standing bold and slamming the door 
on fear. Tell another person, today, I am standing bold and slamming the door on fear in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, what you are saying, your word is spirit. Fear is spirit. Let the word that come out of your mouth go and conquer the spirit of fear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I said, fear is a thief that will rob you of a thousand blessings. Fear is a child of the devil. Fear comes the same way faith does, by hearing words. But fear comes by hearing words that are inspired by the devil. So, sift what you hear. It's not everything that you hear you devil. If it comes and you don't even understand it, go to the word of God. Call upon God. What is it am I hearing? Is this from you or is this from the devil? Sometimes, many times, God has promised you something. The devil will come before that and get dangle the carrot in your face. It may look like what God promised you. And some fool will take it and start running. But they don't know that what the devil give with the right hand, he will take with the left hand. That is what is going on in the movie industries. The devil will give them, they will subscribe to Illuminati, they will be famous one day, the next day they find themselves slammed in jail. Or dead. So, don't take whatever comes your way, just hold hard. Go to God and ask, is this from you or is this from the devil himself? Because sometimes it look alike. It's fake. It's fake. When you see gold, some is gold-plated and some is real gold. My brother and sister, gold-plated will fade away after a while. But the gold, real gold will stay real. So go to God and ask God, what is this? What is this before me? And God is very gracious. He will tell you. Because he already said he is in you. And he's with you at all times. And he's around you all the time. All you need to do is call upon him. He will answer you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fear robbed a generation of Israel their inheritance. Fear almost took Peter to a watery grave when he asked Jesus, if it's really you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come on. And he started walking boldly. Then all of a sudden, he saw the storm and the fear almost took him to the grave in the water. Praise the Lord. Until he cried out to God, Jesus, save me. And he was pulled out to save. Always remember, God is with you all the time. Call upon him, he will answer you. Praise the Lord. Fear is the dark room where all negatives are being developed. Fear robs the eye of sight. It robs the heart of hope. Fear. The Bible says that fear hearts torment in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It has torment. Fear is a killer. It kills dream. It kills destiny. It throws a dark cloud of despair over everything that is good. You must decide that I am standing bold and I'm going to shut the door on fear. Today, you have to decide that. How are you going to do this? Well, what you fear and what you feed, it grows. When you have, I remember in most of my assisted living, we have aquarium. We put aquarium there, we buy the fish, very tiny. And we keep feeding them. Before you know, the goldfish are so big, we don't even know what to do with them anymore. What you feed, grows. 
And one thing I want to tell you this morning, please take it seriously. If you believe on the altar that you are praying on, you need to learn to raise an altar. Learn to raise an altar, no matter how small it is. If there's anything that you are afraid of, that you, don't, you are not sure about, put some money in the in, in envelope, bring it to the, to the papa and say, I want to pray about this and have the prayer of agreement. And he put, most of you have seen me most of the time when I come, I will put something in his hand, he will put it down, he will step on it, we pray, and that is the end of it. I remember about uh, a month ago, I made mention here that I was in the church when my worker called me that uh, my neighbor is screaming about the light he just put up and he didn't talk to me and uh, he's making all kind of noise that he's going to go to city hall and blah 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 so I said okay my wife said don't listen to him just, put, just go and put, raise an altar I said oh that's a good idea so I raised an altar I gave it to papa and papa just stepped on it that Sunday on Saturday night, he cut off the light because I wasn't there. That Sunday, before, before 7 p.m., he went back and connected the light. <laughs> when I raised the altar. The fire that was burning him was too much. That is what an altar does for you, my brothers and sisters. Always learn to raise an altar. Till today, I have not seen him. He has not come to me. Then, but you know when you cut a snake's head, the body will still be shaking. So, two weeks ago, he sent an email, not to me, but to my administrator, about the same light. And then my administrator sent it to me, said, did you see this? I said, don't worry, let me respond. I responded to him, I said, so you want to show me that you are the neighborhood troublemaker? I'm going to show you that I am the neighborhood trouble killer. So, when I wrote that to him, one day, two days, one week, two weeks, we've not heard anything from him. There was one day, he backed out his car, he was playing by his car when I came, when he saw me driving him, he ran, <laughs> he ran into the house. I said, that's right, you know the difference between a child of God and a child of the devil. Praise the Lord. Learn to raise an altar. The altar will work for you. What you feed will grow. Feed your altar and your altar will defend you. Praise the Lord. Are you looking for a job? Don't worry about it. Just raise an altar. Put it there. God will bring that job to you. You will hear a call that you don't even know before. What is it that you're looking for? Just raise an altar. Some people say, oh, I don't have enough money. How much money? God is not looking for your money. If he wants to eat a cow, he doesn't even have to ask you. So you just raise an altar, have a prayer of agreement with Papa, and then you will see things working for you. Praise the Lord. That is one way to stand bold and slam the door on your fear. Sadly, my brothers and my sisters, I believe in many cases that the church has done us a great disservice. Many churches. By preaching to us a gospel of escapism. As though our love for God and our faith in God is going to protect us from going through anything. God did not say you're not going to go through anything. You know, I believe in telling it as it is. I don't like to tell lies. I believe there is too much puffing in the pulpit these days. That is what car salesmen will do. They will do everything to make sure that you buy that car. Whenever we have a resident that is giving us so much headache and will be advocating that this resident should go, when they send people from other facilities to come and uh, assess the person. Ah! My administrator say I'm going to be a salesman, a, a, car, a used car salesman. I say, how are you going to do it? I say, don't worry. 
when they come, say, oh, she's a very good girl. Oh, she does this. Oh, she even do everything by herself. They say, oh, that's the one we want. One week later, the person is gone. We say, thank God. <laughs> and after two weeks, they start calling. You didn't tell us this. They say, sorry, it's your problem now. <laughs> that's what you statesman, you use a car, say, statesman does. They will tell you everything is good until when you take the car home. Anyway, it's another story. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so they don't lie. They will not lie to you. They embellish real heavy. My brother and my sister, we don't need any embellishment on the pulpit. What Papa does is tell you the real truth. Some of you may be afraid of it, but you have to be bold and confront it. Because God, through the man of God, will show you how to go through and navigate through all these fears. Listen to your man of God. It's not like all the ones that are puffing and puffing on the pulpit. My brothers and my sisters. This is the truth. Faith in God and love for God doesn't guarantee us a problem-free life. Faith in God is no guarantee that you will never get sick. Faith in God is not a guarantee that your child will never go try to try drug. Faith in God does not guarantee that you will never suffer some financial losses and that your love for God and my love for God and faith in God may not affect gas prices. It will not affect the prices of the food that is going up these days, my brothers and my sisters. I went to, to the store on Friday just to buy some few fruits so I can impress my, my, my grandchildren. What I thought I would spend about $10, I end, end up spending about $50. I said, wow. Things are going up. Things are going up. But our faith and love for God doesn't say that those things will not go up. But what does it say? It says, through it all, it's there with you. He created your mouth. He knows how to feed it. Just open your mouth to him. He will feed your mouth. Praise the Lord. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Our faith in God does not promise us that we won't have a nuclear war. I don't want to scare you, my brothers and sisters, but I want to be relevant today. These are the issues that we are facing in this country today. Last week, we heard about Israel bombing the embassy uh, and then uh, many generals of uh, Iran were killed. And now, Iran is warming up. They're going to attack Israel. Of course, America is going to support Israel. And what is going to happen, the other powers, uh, North Korea and uh, Russia, will support uh, Iran. Before you know it, another war. I'm not scaring you, but that is what is going on. Our love for God doesn't say that will not happen, but he is with us. He is around us. He's guiding you, and he's going to guide everything that concerns you. Have no fear. That's how you stand bold. My brothers and my sisters, we have to learn how to live in the power and the authority of what God has said. Not what we wish he has said. Not what we presume that he said. The truth is, he never promised us that our faith will keep inflation from increasing. He never promised us that our faith will close the border and cut off the inflow of fentanyl. Drugs are still going to be flowing. He never promised that you wouldn't have a car wreck or a house wouldn't catch fire or that the earth wouldn't quake under your feet or a hurricane will never hit anybody around you. I hope you want to hear the truth today, my brothers and my sisters, because I'm not going to stand here and hype you up with a bunch of feel-good words that paint a pretty picture of perfect world where everything always turned out 
wonderful or just because you are saved. That is not in real life, my brothers and my sister. In real life, bad things happen to good people like you and I. But what I am going to do is give you some Holy Ghost fire power that will put a fire in you. We put a fire in your spirit so that you can stand bold and fight. And some steel in your backbone so that no matter what comes your way, you can look at any situation and stay no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I will condemn. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. Also you will say in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 when the enemy come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Also you can say Romans chapter 8 verse 28 all things work together for good to them that have God that love God and who are called according to his purpose. You also, you also say, like 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith in God. And then you will say, Noah, in 1 John chapter 5, Verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. You know that. You know Noah loves God. His love for God and his faith in God did not keep the flood from coming. The love for God and faith in God does not keep Joseph from being betrayed by his brother and then being thrown into the pit. It doesn't keep the three Hebrew children from being thrown in the fiery furnace. The love of God and the faith in God does not keep Daniel from being thrown into the lion den. Where somebody will say, uh, Reverend, I thought you were supposed to encourage us. Of course, I am. But the difference between me and a lot of other preachers is this. I'm going to tell you the truth. No sugar coating. No flavor added. And I'm not going to water it down just to pacify a bunch of woke sissies and Christians. And Christian snowflakes. The truth is what we see happening in our military today, my brother and my sister, has been happening in our churches. Our military is turning our battle handing men into wimps. In this dark hour that we're in, we need soldiers, not woke sissies and snowflakes. You and I need to know that facing the future boldly and fearlessly doesn't mean everything is going to be peaches and creams. It doesn't mean that the devil is going to roll over and play dead. But facing the future boldly and fearlessly is about slamming the door on fear and having the faith and confidence that no matter what comes or goes, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's about knowing that whatever we have to go through, God is there with us. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says, when thou passest through water, I will be with thee. And through the river, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, 
Thou shalt not be bound, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's God telling you. God never promised that us that we wouldn't have to go through anything. But he promised his presence will go with us and he will sustain us as we are going through it. One of the first keys to standing bold and slamming the door on fear is to know that fear is not just a negative emotion. Fear is actually a spirit. That means that fear is a living personality that is seeking residence in your life. You must resist fear like you will resist someone trying to break into your house. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Fear is always locking and creeping around, trying to gain access into your life. I love the Apostle Paul and the way he handled fear. He handled, he handled his fear. When it came time for Paul to die, history records that he ran to the shopping block. What was Paul doing? He was robbing fear of the power in his life. He was slamming the door on fear. He was treading down fear on the way to his execution. He was saying, you are not taking my life. I am running to give my life away for the one who gave everything for me. That's what he was saying. And when he said that, fear disappeared. Let me be honest with you, my brother and my sister. I don't believe we are through the shaking yet. We started in uh, 2019 with the COVID. There was the shaking. Things have gone up and have never come down. I don't believe we are on the other side of the storm yet. I believe we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But we are still going to, we are still going to go through some turbulence. And we see it in the horizon. The message is not about avoiding the turbulence, my brothers and my sisters, but how to ride it out and come out on top boldly. That is what my message is. No longer shall fear lord it over us, but we shall rule over our fear by faith in Christ Jesus. No longer shall we be held back by fear of the past or the fear of the future. No matter what comes our way, God is there with us. Know that, and that will take over your fear. No longer will we live in fear of COVID, monkeypox, or other disease, or germs, or viruses that they are calling them these days. No longer will we uh, fret over our food supply, or toilet paper, or gas prices, because our God supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Have no fear. Have no fear. Enjoy yourself. I remember in those days when I was in Nigeria, I, you know, after I studied here, I went to Nigeria, I worked, and then when things didn't go well, I was down to nothing. But when I'm coming back home, Every day I go out, when I'm coming back home, I have a bottle of peanuts. I hold it down. And when I got home, you probably don't know what Gary is. I would put Gary, my children would be so happy in a big bowl. I would say, wait, let it swell. Because that Gary will swell. We put more water, we swell. And then with that peanut, all my kids will eat. And they will be so happy that they will run out and play. Because God is supplying. But see us today. One of my son was telling me last week, he said, Daddy, do you remember? I said, oh, you still remember that? It was very small then. He remember. But now, what does he need? What does he want to eat? God will supply all your needs. Don't let the fear of tomorrow cripple you. It's a devil. It's the spirit of the devil. Praise the Lord. We will not be slave to fear. We are slamming the door boldly 
on fear. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 to 12, we read of one of David's very mighty men. I love this man. His name is Shama. I say my next grandson, I'm going to call him Shama. One day, he and some other folks were gathering lentils in, and in, in pea pods. And the Philistine troop rushed in on them. All those who were assisting him, all those who were assisting Shama, they ran away in fear. But the Bible says that Shama stood in the midst of the ground and defended the ground. And he slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. The Lord wrought a, very, a great victory. Not Shama himself. But when he stood, God put the power in him to destroy. And that's what God will do for you. When you stand for God, he will defend you. Because when God opened their eyes, they will see an army. They will not see only you fighting. They will see an army and they will be defeated. My brothers and my sister, he that's in you is greater than they that's in the world. Stand bold and face the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One man, one man, he slammed the door on fear. And not only did he defend the patch, but he slew all the Philistine troops. My brothers and my sister, faith in God is not an escape hatch to magical escape our fears. But our faith is actually the endowment of the supernatural grace and power of God. To confront our fear and slam the door boldly on fear, my brothers and my sisters, we have to believe in the word of God the promises of God. But it doesn't matter because I'm slamming the door on fear. According to the scripture, my times are in God's hand. I understand that in the Bible, there are 365 fear not in the Bible. That means I have one for every day of the year. Call upon that. That's God telling you, fear not. One for every day of the year. Every single day, you can slam the door boldly on your fear. God's word does not promise us that the future will be trouble free, but it does promise you and I that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. So instead of talking about the good old glory days gone by and dreading the future, we should be celebrating that we are in the greater glory days and the best is yet to come. One of the greatest ways to stand bold and slam the door on your fear is to celebrate where we are going. Where you are heading to. Celebrate it. Celebrate that we, are, we haven't seen anything yet. Celebrate that God always saved the best for the last. Celebrate that everything that God has done in the past was just a warming up for what is coming ahead of you. Celebrate it. If the Azusa and the revival of Wales in England and Bronzeville were just a warm up, I can't wait for what Church on Fire International is bringing up in the future. My brothers and my sister, I can't wait for the next attraction of Church on Fire International. We are warming up. I know that from a natural perspective, our world is in a mess. But I believe that is proof positive that something big is in the horizon. And I can see it through what God is doing through our Abba, our man of God. The best is yet to come. 
he can't even stay in one place. They keep calling him. They're calling him here and there. They're calling him here and there. Because the awakening is on the horizon. I believe that the stage is being set for a worldwide shaking and a revival on a scale that has never been seen before. Right now, you are able to sit down any seat you want to sit. Give it before the end of the year. You will have to rush in to get here so that you can get a place to sit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I believe this is another season. It's another reason why the devil is trying to suck us into fear. So he can distract us from the greatest move of God that has ever been on this planet. The devil is is distracting us. My brothers and sisters, I want you to stand up and say this with me. It may look difficult now, but I am slamming the door boldly on my fear. My time are in God's hands. Something big is happening. Something big is happening. I will face my future. I will face my future boldly and fearlessly. And carelessly. Because God is with me. Is with me. I will not run. I will not run. I will not fear. I will not fear. I am God's child. I am God's child. God is with me. God is with me. God is for me. God is for me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to thank God Father, for his word this morning. Give him praise, give him glory. Bless his holy name and worship him. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our life, Father God. Father, we all the adoration, all the praise, all the praise, all the praise, all the praise, all the praise. Receive it, Father. You are the king of the Lord, the Lord, the Alpha and Omega, the one that we want, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Bless the holy name, Father. Receive the adoration. Glory to your mighty name. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you see, when things are going good, the devil always tries to show his face. He's afraid. He's afraid of you. So you know, when anything shows their face, yes, you may be scared a little bit, but you come, say, no, I'm a child of God. The devil runs away. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Do you have an offering this morning? Why don't you bring out your offering and your tithe and let us give to the God. Thank you, Lord. If you have a, a tight, please come. And please package a very good offering, quality offering, to show the Lord that you are standing in this world bold against any power, any principality. Those of you coming for touch service, remember to bring your honey. It's a honey service. Our father will be here live. He has directed that we should bring honey for the touch service. And those of you, if you, are, if you have your tithe, please come forward. You are going to send this tithe that you have boldly. No more devourer in your life. As you give this your tithe, 
in obedience to what God, to what God has said, you stand boldly upon it and no devourer. When devourer shows his face, let the devourer know that you pay the tight and you'll never be in a tight corner in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth, lift up your voice and talk to your tight. Send your tight on errand. No more devourer in your life. For those of you with your offering, please you stand up and let us pray on the offering. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend uh, Nini, uh, Nini, Reverend Nini to please pray on the offering for us. Why don't you raise up that offering? Father, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be here to cast our seeds, our tithes, our offerings. We bring them to you, Lord God, as an act of our obedience to your word. Yes. Let these, Lord, come up as a sweet-smelling savor to you, to be acceptable. But above all, Lord, let them be used as a tool that will help us with the spirit of boldness to crush every that can possibly cripple us and everything you have called us to achieve. Lord, let this be an altar that will speak for us, Amen. that will embolden us, Amen. that will give us the courage needed Amen. so we can stand against every opposition and adversity Amen. that might want to speak against us. Amen. The spirit of boldness. We are righteous and we shall be bold as lions Amen. to confront every that might want to stop us to silence us Lord in Jesus mighty name Amen. thank you Lord for the opportunity to give thank you, Father. and for anyone who is looking up to you Lord for seed I ask this week release Lord seed in multiple forms and ways Amen. Yes. in Jesus mighty name Amen, Amen. 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 praise the Lord yeah, for those of you of God your tie so that things will not be tied for you. You will never be put in tight corner in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's a command of the Lord to bring your tithe into the storehouse. And as you do in obedience, you will never experience dryness in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
to say the grace in fellowship before we close. I know that we have received from the Lord this morning. And now we know, we know say the devil shouldn't show his face, but whenever he shows his face, we're going to stand bold against the devil. So let us say the grace in fellowship. May the, May grace, the grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, and the, the love, love of God, God and, and the, the sweet fellowship, fellowship of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit rest and abide, and abide with, with us, us now, now and forevermore. And forevermore. Amen. 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 Surely, God's, God's goodness, goodness and mercy shall, shall follow us, us all, all the days of our lives, and we shall, shall dwell, dwell in the house, house of the Lord forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to declare... Hello, 2024. I know you've been waiting for me. Here I am to shine forth. Wow, 2024. You are here. I am here to shine forth. Shining forth is the agenda on God's calendar. I am the light of the world. No doubt about that. My father is a father of lights. I am shouting about, about it. it. Jesus Christ is the supreme light from whom I generate my light, through whom I reveal God's light. Yes, darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness, the people, but I and mine are accepted. I am born of God, rooted in Christ, blessed with light that defeats all forms of darkness, Light, light is, is the, the cure, cure of darkness. darkness. So, so as, as the light of the world, I am the solution to the contradictory equation that confronts my world and generation. I won't hold back my light. I will shine forth. My shining forth will impact and influence my world for the glory of God. I cannot fail. Because, because I, I have been equipped with, with God's, God's promises, promises, purpose, plans, and power. I cannot be stranded because I am connected to strange help, strong help, massive help, and timely help. Shining forth is God's agenda. Shining forth is my non-negotiable mandate. My light will shine. My light will shine, our shine will shine in all ramification of life. We are walking on and possessing the streets of gold. We dominate this decade. We are winning in Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, go ahead. Uh, give us a song.